if you don't subscribe to Hey Fightin' Podcast, you should if you're an LSU fan. Cody Worsham, uh, who's a friend, who's also a digital media reporter, he's the in, you know, in-house digital media reporter at LSU. Uh, Cody does the podcast. Now, obviously, he gets great access as well because he can interview all the coaches and the players, etc. And he interviewed uh, Miles Brennan a few weeks back on the podcast. And on the recent episode, he had LSU's two grad transfers, Jabril Cox and Liam Shanahan. Now, I think one, one of the things that here, I, I've given Ed Ogeron a ton of praise for that he deserves, I think, which is part of the reason you've seen LSU build what I think is a sustainable power is roster management. Ed looks at his roster, and while it's not just about recruiting star rankings, it's about recruiting positions of need in every possible avenue. So if you need to go traditional transfer, they've gone Bad Moss and Braden Fajoko, guys who became big-time contributors on their championship team. Grad transfers, well, got Joe Burrow and Cole Tracy. This year, you were decimated losing four of your top six offensive linemen and your top four linebackers. What did they go get in, grad, in the grad transfer market? A versatile offensive lineman and an all American FCS All-American linebacker who had won three national championships. Roster management. The contrast of that is, and I'm not knocking anybody, but the contrast is the year when LSU went out and they had more kickers on the roster, scholarship kickers, than linebackers. You're recruiting, your star ratings are good, but when you've got 15 scholarship wide receivers and three linebackers, that's a problem. That That's not happening here, is my point. And Liam Shanahan's a big part of that. Uh, so it was a good conversation. I'm not going to recap the whole thing. They talked about how Liam's a, a, a an, his father is an immigrant who came from Ireland. Liam Shanahan has a World Series ring, by the way. Now, personally, I'd flush this particular one down the toilet. Musa is laughing over there. Jerk face. They were a really good team in 2018. But nonetheless, fascinating guy. He went to Harvard. He's got two other siblings that went to Cornell. Sort of an Ivy League family. Like, really good background on him. Go listen to the podcast. You can hear all that. It's engaging. It's fun. Go listen. What I wanted to focus on here was the on the field stuff. First of all, here was Liam talking about his mindset in, in coming to LSU from Harvard. My mindset really was just um, even before I, I signed and, and was coming here, talking to Coach Craig was I want to step in and, and take advantage of any opportunity that I got, whether it be center guard or tackle. Um, you know, he even told me, he said he wasn't sure where I, where I would uh, where I would actually end up playing. Um, but really, my I just wanted to, I was ready to play anything. You know, I just wanted to prove myself here. Um, that I can play here and I can play well here. Uh, and ultimately just help the team in, in whatever way I can, whatever position I, I play. So He got his degree from Harvard in finance, so this is 100% a football move. Talked about how he watched LSU a year ago. The offense is a lot of fun. If you wanted to go play at the highest level, where else but the defending national champs. The kicker, though, is Liam Shannon has only played guard and center. So he talked about, I, I'm sorry, guard and tackle. So he talked with Cody about adjusting to a new position on the line. The mental part of it, uh, I've done a good job um, kind of learning the system. Um, and kind of um, learn the calls and stuff that the centers would have to make. And then, um, you know, just right when I got here, when we started out workouts and, and uh, like the quarterbacks were, were throwing the receivers and stuff, I would stay out um, and get some snaps and stuff. And I guess um, I know I got, I guess I was snapping the ball well and got some good feedback. Um, so, yeah, that's where, I, that's where I'm at now. Um, you know, still, still just into the position, but, uh, but definitely, definitely doing doing well, I think, and progressing. So, so the move to center wasn't even so much something the coaches were trying to shoehorn him in. It was staying after practice and working on snaps, and that going pretty well. And then them kind of saying, "I have something here," and then getting more, more and more reps. Now, in moving to center, Shanahan said, "There's really there's two things, two things that are the the biggest focuses for him." There's two parts of it, just the calls and stuff um, are an adjustment, but I, I think I'm doing well on that side. And then the other other part is just snapping the ball, just making sure like uh, when you're like when you're playing guard that you're you're thinking about making the blocks. You know that's yeah. that's what you got to do. But when you're at center, you got to remember that before you go to make the block, you got to snap first every play. It's it's how the play starts. So that's that's really the big thing. The other tidbit, which because I, I know a lot of people get interested in heights and weights and sort of stuff like that. The other thing Liam said is that he played at Harvard last year at 290. He's up to 310 right now. Moffitt's got 20 pounds on him already. Said it wasn't even really that hard to put on with the nutrition center and the strength staff and everything. So 
they bulked him from 290 to 310. And I don't mind saying this candidly, ear to ground, you kind of pay attention to some of the things people who have gotten an opportunity to see practice, which we haven't, that one of the big questions was physically, how would you do when like Tyler Shelvin at 370 is lined up across from you in that first snap? And apparently on the first snap, it didn't go well for Liam. But he's figured some things out technique-wise and developed. So I'm really fascinated because he's filling massive shoes with Lloyd Cushenberry, who was so good there a year ago, so much so that he went from literally the last member of his class, of his signing class, and redshirting to he going around three or four to Denver. I mean, three, round three? Either way, like, I think maybe Damian, Damian Lewis is third round to Seattle and Lloyd was fourth round to Denver. Either way, point, it's like a mid-round pick from a guy who's literally, hey, we don't know if we have a spot for you. Just hang tight until signing day and we'll see how things shake and we might have a spot for you. Two, starting center, all-conference caliber player drafted in the middle rounds by the Denver Broncos. That's big shoes to fill. Here was Liam, who, by the way, who has gotten an opportunity to kind of shadow Lloyd Cushenberry a little bit. I've watched a ton of film of Lloyd. He's, he's it's big shoes to fill. Um, I, I I was lucky enough to meet him a couple times because he was uh, in here working out um, in June before he had to had to go to Denver. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to do everything I can to to walk, get on the film and watch everything that he did and. And ultimately, try to be be like him because he was he sure did a hell of a job last year. Um, lot lots I can learn from him. So another part of the transition, and so you can obviously tell you got a smart guy, Harvard educated, finance. His whole focus right now, being here, is taking his football career to the next level to see what may be there. Motivated guy, son of an immigrant who's worked really hard. Now he's got this opportunity. He's already put on twenty pounds. He's learning a new position. The other thing he said in that interview, which I found interesting, is, look, people get concerned a lot about the calls, and that's part of it. But ultimately, that's Miles Brennan who's going to make the final call if something's going to going to be done or changed or whatever. So while you're talking about a new center, you also have a fourth-year quarterback who's been with Ensminger for three years in, the, in his system that makes a lot of sense that that transition is going to be eased a little bit. So... More than anything, it's the battery. Like, get that quarterback center exchange down and then go from there, which it appears is happening. But if you, Paul, can you show this again for those that are, are watching? Um, there's a picture. You can find this on social media really anywhere. It's a, it's a picture that's issued th from Harvard when Liam was there. Just if you look at the picture of him playing at Harvard, you look at kind of how lean he is relative to what you think about offensive linemen in the SEC, you can tell... Like, they had to put weight on him, and apparently they already have. They put about 20 pounds on him already, which is great to see. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.